As you may be aware, there are many kinds of assessments, and there are different ways to categorize assessments. The most common way to categorize an assessment is by labeling it as one of three types of assessments. These are diagnostic assessment, formative assessment, and summative assessment. Each has a different purpose. A diagnostic assessment is done before the learning experience begins to gauge where students are at. A formative assessment is done during the teaching and learning experience. Its goal is to provide feedback to the teacher on student progress. This helps the teacher determine how to teach differently. And the summative assessment is done at the end of a period of a longer, cohesive learning experience. It is done to assess how well the student learned the taught material. As you can tell, assessment is valuable to both assess the student and enhance the learning experience. Also, assessment is a vehicle not only for measurement, but also for learning. That's particularly true with formative assessment. Regardless of the kind of assessment, curriculum and assessment are inseparable from each other. In ideal circumstances, assessment should be based on competencies students need to master. Since competencies also guide development of all curriculum, curriculum and assessment need to be in sync. Students should learn knowledge and skills that help them succeed in assessments. And assessments should assess the knowledge and skills students are expected to learn. But does this sound like a chicken and egg kind of problem? Sometimes it is, but most times the reality is a little more nuanced. Often, summative assessment is common across the nation, state, or similar body of institutions that your institution belongs to. This common summative assessment becomes the starting point that guides curricular choices. It sometimes guides even the formative assessment that assesses the curriculum being taught. It is quite possible that summative assessment and formative assessments no longer remain in sync with each other. What if the standardized assessment is not built around competencies? In that case, it's also likely that the standardized assessment doesn't actually measure learning. Instead, it might measure memorization and reproduction of facts. This doesn't work with a teacher's efforts to focus on assessing true learning. If you don't have standardized assessment for your grade or level, it is a little different. In this case, your curriculum and assessment should be built as closely as possible. If you don't do this, textbook materials can begin to define what the curriculum and syllabi are. Eventually, it can even define what the assessment is. All this can be very harmful for the educational experience your institution provides. So we suggest that you keep the curriculum and assessment as in sync with each other as possible and allow these to become the basis for the textbook materials and other resources you pick and not the other way around where you just pick a textbook and test on whatever you find there after teaching all year long. One last thing. I said that assessment and curriculum are built around competencies. We've earlier talked about the need to keep a high bar for your competencies. This doesn't mean they're set in stone and should never change. Assessment and instruction may sometimes inform competencies and how they're organized, particularly when they reflect an understanding of student thinking and areas of challenges.